Hi. First of all, thank you for being here. Thank you, Adam. Let's hear it for Rachel for coming. <laughs> Why this film? I I made it. This is my second film as a director. I made another film called Our Brand Is Crisis, which I finished in two thousand and five. Anyway, when I finished that film, I was kind of dissatisfied. I was like, Oh, I can do something bigger. I want to do something harder. And so, uh, on a personal level, my motivation was that I wanted to tackle something kind of massive. And at the time, I didn't know anyone in the oil business, and I honestly didn't really know anyone in sub-Saharan Africa. So it was kind of a big deal to get on a plane to Lagos, Nigeria, and say, I'm going to get access to an oil company. Um, but it really did start out as a personal thing. Um, on the level of subject matter, at the time, you know, in 2005, 2006, oil prices were going through the roof, and you were seeing it on the news all the time. People are talking about it less now. But at the time, there was all this fear of peak oil, and, and I thought to myself, I really want to get inside the business. And so originally, my original concept was to do something inside the oil business. And then when I did some research, I discovered that the coast of West Africa, the Gulf of Guinea, or Guinea, depending on how you pronounce it, is uh, this new frontier. It's considered a new frontier by a lot of oil companies, underexplored territory. And so there are a lot of international oil companies are going there to look for new sources of petroleum. And I thought, oh, well, that's an interesting landscape to go into, you know, this underexplored territory. And then, in the news, this Nigerian militancy um, started popping up in the news, and they were blowing up pipelines, and they were causing worldwide oil prices to soar. And at the time, actually, it's not in the film, but they were kidnapping oil workers and holding them hostage. And I thought, okay, well, there's got to be a film there, right? <laughs> so, so that was the original idea. Originally, I was going to make the whole thing in Nigeria, and um, Cosmos came in later. Cosmos was, they were people I came across in my research, and then met, and they gave me access, and and you don't, you don't say no to access like that, even though it's in the wrong country. And, and so the movie evolved. And I don't mean to imply that God is the wrong country. It's just like, it just wasn't, it just wasn't my original intention. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I think we need to give you a hands for a big hands of applause. This lady came to Ghana with one other person with him. With her, the other person was just a cameraman. And as a result of back and forth, this is what she was able to do. And it's so amazing how this little, excuse me to say, woman in Africa with these mean looking men, how she was able to do it, I don't know. But she did it. Uh, and in answer to your question about Ghana, uh, just like it was said in the movie, uh, Ghana seems to be a little bit different from Nigeria. Different in the sense that Ghanaians see themselves as one. You talk to a Nigerian, they will tell you either I'm Igbo or Yoruba or somebody. They don't see themselves as belonging to one country. Ghana is different. And one difference between what is happening in Nigeria compared to Ghana is that there was a democracy in place in Ghana before the oil discovery, which is quite different. Uh, oil was discovered in Nigeria about 50 years ago. At that time, it was still under British colonial rule. The systems were not in place. But Ghana has a legit democracy, checks and balances. All the petroleum agreements went through parliament, went through cabinet, parliamentary select committee on energy, examined it before they approved it. And you know what they did? As soon as the oil discovery was made, the president then decided to call the Norwegians in to help Ghana so that they don't, they tell them how to do it so that they don't follow the Nigerian model. So that's why I think is the difference between Ghana and Nigeria. Uh, as I was watching this, I kept wondering why were so many different players in this movie willing to have you film? And so everyone asked me that, and, and I'm kind of the wrong person to ask. I mean, you'd, you'd have to ask them, right? But I can tell you, um, first of all, I believe that 
fundamentally, if I'm, if I'm asking someone if they want to be in a film, it's because I have an interest in listening to them. I don't, as a filmmaker, I have, I, I have not chosen thus far anyway to make films about people that I really don't want to listen to. There are films like that, right? But that's not me so far, anyway. Um, so that means that when I'm coming and approaching somebody, I'm saying, hey, I'm interested in your perspective. And I think when people get to know me over time, they realize that I'm, you can ask George this, because he's probably a better source. But I'm a pretty sincere, straightforward person, and if I say something, I mean it, you know? And if I say, if you ask me to stop filming, I will stop filming, I'm not gonna like secretly shoot you or something. Like I, I believe in respecting people's limits. Um, but I think, uh, I think people knew that I was open to listening to the stories they had. When I began this film, I started with, I think, three or four phone numbers in my pocket. Um, I started by, my first step was I bought a plane ticket to Lagos, Nigeria. I'd never been there, I was terrified <laughs> that I was going to get, you know, uh, raped and pillaged at the side of the road, basically, because I'd read all these horrible things about Lagos. I love Lagos, by the way. I'm like a huge Lagos fan. But at the time, I, I'd never been to Lagos, and I was very scared. And um, it turned out to be like the easiest place I'd ever traveled to because I made so many preparations before I came to Lagos in terms of having somebody meet me at the airport and having a ride to the hotel and these things that I normally never do that it was very, very smooth. Um, but I began with four phone numbers and none of them had anything to do with the oil business. One was a guy who'd gone to boarding school, a Nigerian guy who'd gone to boarding school with my husband's business partner's brother. <laughs> right? Another was a guy who, I, I met this graduate student at Columbia University, I live in New York, and she had spent a summer in Nigeria and she knew a guy who lived in the Niger Delta, he was a Lebanese guy. Um, you know, so there were people like that, there were these very random people, and when I got to Lagos, I bought a SIM card, and I got a Nigerian cell phone, two, actually, because you need two, because the cell phones don't work very well, and, and then I started making phone calls, and that's how I started, and it took me about a year and a half before I had the access that I needed to the various things that I needed. It was a lot, a lot of time, unpaid time, <laughs> sitting in African waiting rooms, waiting. <laughs> From an individual personal standpoint, as a filmmaker, um, making films and living are very much intertwined. And the projects that I choose are very much about the moment that I'm at in my life and how I, what I want to become in a certain way. And for me, this film was very much kind of a trial. It was like climbing some, to, to take this on was a big deal for me. And to prove to myself that I could do it was a big deal for me, and to grapple with these very big questions that I think are fundamental to the way the world works now. You know, it's not just a question. These are these questions are obviously fundamental in Ghana and Nigeria, but they're fundamental in the world at large. You know, the question of maximum profit and who gets what from from various resources and why. And there there are larger questions really about capitalism and the profit motive. And so those things are things that I wanted to examine in this way at this point in my life, but I, my life has changed a lot. So the answer is, I mean, the simple answer is yes. You know, the Ghanaian government is trying to put into place um, protocols to say, to learn the lessons from, you know, Trinidad or Norway or wherever about a better path. And certainly they're very, very conscious of quote unquote, not wanting to be like Nigeria in, in that regard. Um, the circumstances are very, very different in the two countries. Most of the oil in Nigeria has been found onshore to date. So um, some of that is like next to villages. And when it's, when it's not, you actually often see people moving around the wellheads. Now that's kind of weird, right? Why would a bunch of people move around a wellhead? Well, they do it because they don't get any support from their government whatsoever. So they're basically their only hope is to get some kind of help from the company. So they literally move their village around the wellhead so that they have some claim with the company that they owe them something because their village is around the wellhead, right? Because they need help from somebody and nobody's giving them any help. So we're talking in Ghana about, first of all, much less oil 
than in Nigeria, but secondly, it's way offshore. So the fundamental, literally, the ge geography of it is very, very different. I think it's highly unlikely that you're going to end up with like a local militancy like this in Ghana. First of all, like you don't have the same kind of cultural divisions. I mean, maybe you can answer this, Jordi, but my sense, because you're Ghanaian and I'm not, but my sense of it is that you don't have the same kind of cultural, like, deep rifts. Like, the Ija of Nigeria are, like, persona non grata historically, and you don't, you don't really have that in the same regard. Do you? I mean, you're Ashanti, so you're kind of the wrong guy to ask. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, she knows more about Ghana than I do. <laughs> well, am I like on the right track? Am I being yes, like, moderately <laughs> accurate? So, so they're very different landscapes, would be my short answer. And yes, they're trying.